You may be seated. There are a whole slew of announcements, but we will um, save those for the congregational meeting. At this time, I invite Russ Bain, the congregation secretary, to come forward, and he will just kind of give you an update on the food pantry and how that's going while I set up the slides. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everybody. Uh, the food pantry's going really well, week after week after week. People have been donating uh, money, food. We, we receive help from people that we don't even know. They come and drop off food and are very happy that they can do so. And uh, the, the customers keep coming weekly. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, it's a great joy to be a part of, and, and thank you for everybody who contributes to that. Uh, either once, every week, every month, you know, all the time, uh, we appreciate all the donations. And I'm supposed to keep filling in time while Pastor is uh, back doing the computer stuff. I can't do such work, so... Pastor's family do a wonderful job with all the IT and, and the church, and uh, we're very grateful for that. So how's everybody doing? Good. <laughs> well, I see another customer's coming right now. Right. My wife Diane's out here doing some good work too today. Yeah. Steve always does good work. A lot of people begging and buying groceries. I mean, it's, it's quite a sight to behold. Um, hopefully for Christmas we're going to do some cookie giveaways and some gospel coloring books, uh, you know, coming up for Christmas. So uh, we look forward to that too. So. Okay, now I get to leave. <laughs> Thank you, Russell. Good morning, everybody, again. It is great to have you with us, and we are excited. I want to do my clicker. Be helpful. There we go. All right. Voters meeting. And I mean, I guess you have to push it one more slide for me. She's <coughs> there we go. Garland is not here with us. He has family duties this morning. But we had a council meeting this morning and they all ran through the, the slides. They spent time in the budget. We, <laughs> this is one of the most prepared presentations we've ever had since I've been here because so much has happened and we want to do a great job for you guys. But this is your church council. I know you have not seen them that much, but uh, Garland Simrell, he was here a few Sundays ago. Beautiful little baby. Um, Russ Bain, you just saw. Tom Clarkson, you probably won't see until COVID is over. Uh, he and his wife are hunkering down. And again, if you are still hunkering down during COVID, that is a great choice. We love that you are safe, and we love that you can worship with us online. We are really proud of that fact. Uh, Tom Clarkson, I think Tom is ready and unmuted. If you can say hi, Tom. There he is. Hello, everybody. <laughs> All right. Tom is here with us. Carl Schneider is in the back with his lovely wife, Kristen. And then Dan Hill is back there. And, and Pete, Pete, Dan, and Ed are kind of the uh, three-headed team that really make the church go. Pete spends so much time here. And Ed's been here for forever. And Dan's doing a great job as well. All right, you can pull out, Tom. I mean, uh, evangelism is vacant at the moment. And we're going to leave it that way for now just because it's been a little bit of an upheaval. We're going to work on that in 2021, trying to fill that seat in our church council. Jan Waugh is our financial secretary. We're not going to make you say anything or do anything, Jan, but she does an awesome job and has been very faithful with handling our money. And Penny Rack is doing a great job as well, uh, paying our bills and making sure that everything keeps moving. Uh, Tom Parshley is not be here with us either. He is our elder. And we're going to get through all those as we go through it. And I mean, you could push us along one more slide. There we go, I think I can do it. There's just all the different reports from the different areas of our church that you saw there. 
All right, outreach programs, it's been a little limited, but there you see Russ in action. Um, I think we lived that one last Sunday. What is so overwhelming to me, this past Sunday, we just went over $8,000 with the food that we've given away, which is, uh, if you're new to our church, we, I have always gotten paid. The church has taken incredible care of me. And yet at times, things are extremely tight. And so for God to bless us so that we can give away $8,000 worth of food is shocking. When we started this in May, I think it was May, I, I never imagined that it would last, well, any of this would last this long. And so I, I tell people we'll do this as long as we can. And I guess we can keep doing it. So we're going to keep on going as long as the Lord enables us. Because we are still helping people in the community who really need it. Um, Emmy, you could push one more slide for me. Yes, uh, the neighborhood cookout was the first event that we did since March, and it went pretty well. Um, we were able to meet some people, but again, we have to keep our numbers low. The church council has a theme that we don't want to make the news, which I think is wise, and we don't want to be a super spreader event. So we want to be careful, socially distant. Um, and yet still reach out to the community and give our members a fellowship opportunity. And next slide, Emmy. Uh, yeah, uh, the Halloween party was wonderful. And if you can ever imagine children being surrounded by candy and them not eating it, it was a little different, but that's what happened. Uh, they were just so excited to play with each other. And uh, that kind of struck a nerve with me that maybe there's this need in the community for kids just to get together. That's so hard, though. We pretty much canceled all of our kids' events because we just don't feel comfortable offering them. Uh, but we're gonna try to do what we can in a limited fashion, of course, going forward in 2021. Next slide. Uh, Imagine Movies is a lot of fun. Uh, Ron Giustini has taught movies at Carnegie Mellon. He wrote the book on it. And what's so cool about this is it's a slice of the population of Winston-Salem that I would never get to meet. And so I love this. And it gives our church another reason to reach out to, to the community. And they come together and they just love putting it all together. And it's this giant art form that combines a lot of fun stuff. So if you're curious at all, it is a lot of fun. We're gonna try that every uh, third Wednesday of the month. Next slide. <coughs> and this is what we have left in, two, in 2020. The food pantry, of course, is, is a major ministry. And we've met a lot of wonderful people through that. Um, Imagining Movies is coming up on December 16th. We're gonna try a bonfire cookie gift. And we talked about this a little bit. I wanted to get some of your feedback. We're gonna have a bonfire in the front parking lot just in the asphalt. We have some members who enjoy fire. And then <coughs> the vision was to have them drive through um, the carport, receive a gift of cookies and an invitation to our Christmas Eve service. And then they would just drive on up um, because we can't really invite people to do anything. But that'd be one way that we can Try to reach out to the community even a little and then give our members a chance to have a s'more and enjoy some fellowship and who love who doesn't love burning fire or burning wood so it's a simple i mean that's what we have for christmas this year i talked to some colleagues um, at the pastors conference this past weekend and then uh, at a circuit meeting and so that's what some other churches are doing so we're going to try it and of course christmas eve is december 24th it's at 5 30 we've had that earlier time um, it seems to work out well for our families, uh, so we're going to try that. We should be able to fit everyone in our church. Um, the, the law is 30% of capacity. Our capacity is 334, I believe, on that back wall. And so even with our checkerboard set up for our pews, we shouldn't normally break up more than 115 or 110. So I think we're, we should be able to do it all with, with one service on Christmas. And we will, of course, stream, <laughs> excuse me, our worship service that that will have. Thank you. This is 2021. Now, I told the council we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but depending on what happens, a lot could happen by the end of January, right? That's when our first event is a, a movie event where we invite the community to come and we show a movie, popcorn, uh, candy, and soda. And they watch it in here in the big screen. And it's fun. It's a great way to meet people. And that's how all of our events are. So we're going to plan for all the events in 2021. Those are all real dates. They're all on the website. You don't need to write them down. Um, and if we have to uh, set the event and cancel it because of COVID, so be it. But I know that if we don't plan it, we won't do anything. 
And I don't want to miss that opportunity. So that's our plan. Next slide. <coughs> um, this is in general, we try to do one outreach event each month. Not on a Sunday because there's a string attached to worship. This is on a Friday or Saturday or some other night during the week. We wanted to do one event just to reach out to, to the community, just to meet people. And God has blessed this effort so far in the almost three years that we've tried it. Uh, that's why you see a lot of banners off by the side of the road. And so we're going to just keep on keeping on with that. Next slide, Amy. There are a lot of different ways that people can reach out. For example, Jason Penchhorn has moved away from our congregation. He um, is, a, is a park ranger at one of the state parks out on east. And he still worships with us, and he still is our Twitter guy. And so all the events, he just takes off our website and posts it on Twitter. I don't know if he's watching this morning, but just little things like that. If you could just take over one little part of that outreach, I don't have to go on Twitter and do anything. And all of this is cumulative. And it kind of builds up, as everyone does, just one little piece. So if that interests you at all, we, we will still try to do some of that outreach in, in 2021. Um, you just tell me what you're, what you love to do. We'll try to match you to it. Next one, Amy. Oh, Tom Clarkson. Why don't you drag over Tom and he can talk a little bit and then he can walk you through the slides first. Yep. Thank you. Next slide, please. So we have a number of uh, Bible studies uh, going on that are uh, quite fun. We have actually four of them, including the after uh, uh, Sunday church, and uh, we encourage you all to attend. One of them starts at 10.30 uh, for, on Wednesdays, and we're studying Paul's letter to the Colossians. Um, you can really, even though it's already started, you can really join at any time because they're always encouraging new uh, words from Paul. And so that's, uh, we, have, we have a lot of fun with it. So consider attending, it's, it's really quite fun. And we learn a lot about too. Uh, next slide, please. And there's also the Lady Bible Study on Wednesdays, every other Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Uh, they're studying a book of devotions by Barbara Johnson. Um, I'm told they have lots of fun in fellowship, but if you're interested in that, contact Linda Jacoba. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, next slide, please. A little bit of lag time here, I think. So in Sunday mornings, there's always a 9 o'clock um, before the church service um, we're, uh, Bible study. And just at the moment, we're studying The Grand Weaver, which is a book by Robbie Zacharias. Uh, again, we have uh, lots of fun with it. Great group there. And in December, and probably a week after next or so, uh, we'll begin studying the Gospel of Luke. And we thought that'd be fun with uh, Christmas upon us. And, we haven't uh, studied a gospel book uh, yet, so that should be quite fun. So, hope you can attend. It's it's easy. We're doing these Bible studies right now with Zoom, so that it's uh, easy for people to do, and especially if you're worried about uh, COVID. Then the after church Bible study, we've uh, been doing politics, and I think there's one more to go on that, and then you'll be hearing soon what we do uh, next. So, thank you. So. Uh, they're really quite fun, so I urge you to attend these Bible studies. It's uh, really, really quite fun. And uh, educational, too, but it's great. Then every day, uh, pastor sends out some email devotions, uh, which those are fun to listen to and look at. Uh, you can go and look at the sermons if you've missed them on our website. Uh, there's also the Bible classes that we've done after the church service or archived there. And then there's also a place, your time of grace, devotions. You can see the website there if you'd like to go there. So there are plenty of uh, study uh, opportunities, and uh, I urge you to take advantage of them. Thank you. All right. Next 
Next up is Carl, but we made a deal. Um, and so I'm going to take Carl's report. Carl is awesome. If you haven't had a chance to meet with him, and he and his wife have been spearheading our Sunday school program. And just the fact that it's going during COVID is great. And we are really thrilled about it. If you push the next slide to me, yeah. <clears throat> if you are at home and you can't participate in Sunday school, I don't want you to stop teaching your children about God. Take advantage of some of these offerings that our church body has uh, for COVID. Um, Northwestern Publishing House is, is the publishing arm of our church body. And they have made YouTube devotions for every level of Sunday school. It goes from pre-K all the way up to like fifth grade. And you could purchase one of the booklets that, that you would get here at the school at any of the copy handouts. And you could do right at home. And so I know it's almost impossible to pull this off on a Sunday morning, but just pick some time during the week to make that happen. And that can be still a really good time for your family to learn more about God. Next, next one. Uh, confirmation, we have a new curriculum. And it is really good. It, it weaves in the Bible history with the confirmation lessons. Um, and I'm just really excited to offer that to, to the church. And there are a few families who have taken advantage of it. If you have uh, confirmation, age, confirmation age children and you wanted to check that out, just reach out to me, shoot me an email. Um, you could use the contact form on the website if you don't have that, and I, I will get it and we will be in touch and set you up. So this has been a great blessing for our church too. Next one, Dan is up. Come on down, Dan. Basic stuff going on. I mean, uh, we got the, the daily maintenance going on every day. Um, you know, we're trying to keep the building as clean as possible with COVID and everything. So we have all our uh, things in place to, to social distance and keep the place clean. Um, <clears throat> we are looking to replace or fix the parking signs um, outside the parking lot. Uh, I'm not sure what that all has consisted of. As of, as of yet, um, uh, so we'll, we'll be looking into that. Uh, obviously, the uh, the pew ropes are are, are new. Um, I think they look much better than the uh, the old blue tape, <laughs> the painter's tape. So that that was a, a nice little touch and uh, kind of makes things look a little little nicer. Um, other than that, we're looking to get uh, lights, uh, switches, and outlets all updated and, and replaced. Um, uh, most of them are the only style they don't have. I think we're looking to get what, like the GFCIs and all that kind of stuff. Basically, just update things and get get us a little more modernized, I guess. Uh, other than that, uh, we got the the pews to be fixed yet. Uh, the altar and uh, the wall um, with the, the leaking and uh, the the stained glass. I know. Pete, you had some estimates. Were they working on that, or is that uh, been Stained glass is done. It's done. Okay. Um, other than that, yeah, that's, that's about all we got going on with the, the properties. Uh, did you have anything you'd like to, to add in? Yeah. I think that's it. All right. <laughs> you can back it up, man. There you go. Uh, yeah, if you could go back one, one slide or something. Just a word on, on the pews. This is, I mean, if, if you've been in church recently, um, the, 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 the pews are just ripping out. They're, the church is pushing 30, and uh, the, the sunlight just makes the, the, the fabric thin. And we, we've tried to patch them over the years, and they, we just can't. And so this is one of the improvements that just needs to happen. That and the carpet is also original. It's, it doesn't look terrible, but at some point, we need to get a new carpet as well. And so when you look at the budget, <coughs> it's going to be a little bit of a sticker shock on a few different levels. But um, it's going to be close to $20,000, we think, to replace, to reupholster the, the, the pews. We had talked about use, doing chairs instead of pews because that would be more economical, but in general, the response of the congregation was that they didn't like the chairs. 
I guess I didn't either. I, I, I love our pews and how it makes everything look, all the wood matches. It, it would just be, be nicer. So we're going to look at rebidding that because it's been almost 18 months since we had those original bids, and I'm sure they've, they've expired since then. So um, that's going to come up in May. The, the plan is May and June to possibly spend that, that money, possibly $20,000. So just keep that in mind as we get to the money part portion of this presentation. All right, <coughs> elders, I'll take that one. Um, church attendance has been really, really good. I'm just going to start with that. And I know that not everyone has been able to come to worship, and that is extremely frustrating for some of my colleagues, but I am so proud of all of you that you have made it an effort to, to maintain your connection to your God. And so those, those two numbers, between January 1st and March 8th, we averaged 51 people in attendance on a Sunday morning. Since COVID, we've been averaging 26, which sounds like half. However, the problem is views online are almost meaningless. And on August 30th, we had 61 views. On September 6th, we had 60 views, but 400 fewer minutes watched. And so to me, minutes watched is more of an absolute how many people or how much viewage is there out there. <laughs> As we try to quantify what we're doing, um, it's difficult. And so some people say, well, do people watch for a half hour, 45 minutes, an hour? If you throw an hour times 10, that's 600. Times 20, you're at 1,200. At 25, you're at 1,500 minutes. So even just if you figure that, but most people don't watch for a whole hour. They maybe either watch just the sermon, and it's all over the place. It's really difficult. And a view is six seconds on Facebook. On YouTube, you can click it and close it immediately, and that counts as a view. So views are almost meaningless. That and most of our families sit together, and that's one view, but it could be a family of four or five. So it's so hard to quantify, and it's frustrating for us to, to try to do that, but it doesn't really matter. I know that people are watching. I know that a lot of our families are. And like I say, I'm proud of you for making an effort to keep your spiritual health during this time of, of the pandemic. So we're going to try to do our best we can to communicate that. All right, next slide. <coughs> Our numbers are going up um, for communicants and baptized members, which is good. I don't know if we can say a whole lot more about that. Um, I guess if you have any questions, you can ask. Next slide, Amy. And Tom partially wanted to really make the point that if you, we, we've tried to reach out to every member of our church, at least monthly. Most, some people weekly, depending on how, how they're doing. Um, if you have not been contacted, or first of all, we apologize. Second of all, reach out to us, and we will happily respond. Or if you, members, if you're watching, know someone who needs a phone call, who hasn't had one in a while, or a visit, I will be happy to visit. I offer the Lord's Supper, or I do a socially distanced visit. I'll stand 10, 15 feet away from you and just yell at you. I'm happy to do that. So, yeah. And it, it makes a big difference just seeing someone in person sometimes. So, all right, next, the financial report. Uh, this is our cash flow uh, year to date. Um, it, the income and expenses, and we were almost uh, 90, 92, more than $9,200 in the black. Those are remarkable numbers. And Penny's nodding her head, and it's just, it is so wonderful, and if, I, I have to tell you, every Sunday I just kind of take a breath, say a prayer of thanks to all that God has accomplished for our little church. And if you just came lately, you're enjoying it, and that's awesome, but yeah, this has been a remarkable time. Um, our proposed budget, I feel like I missed, oh no, that's, yeah, you're going to see it at the end. Our proposed budget, let's just go back and forth a couple times. So that's what we're doing right now, and then, remember, that's not a whole year, and it turns into that. That's a big jump. But understand there's still a month and a half left on that income side for the first one. And we are factoring in spending 20,000 more on pews in May and June of 2021. And by the end of the year, we're going to have almost 30,000 in the bank, probably 27 penny in the bank by the, by the end of the year. Again, these are shocking numbers for us, but being the best stewards of what we, we have, 
And uh, we're trying to work with them with the loan agency as well for our church body because they keep on raising our rate as they see that we're able to do so. So we want to be good stewards of all that God has given us. Um, cash balance in February of 2020 was that. Our cash balance now is that. And so I think we, we can afford to um, fix the fuse. Just to give you an example, uh, the, the tropical storm that came through tore our, our banner for our food pantry in like three pieces. And I brought it back in, and every member that I talked to said, well, we can tape it and fix it, which is a little ridiculous. Because what kind of a message are you trying to send to the community if you have this ripped up tape? Like, it's only $170 to get a new one. But that's, we, we have tried so long to be such good stewards, and I think that we still are being good stewards. But we just have a little bit more breathing room to do more ministry. So I'm excited about some of the opportunities that we have to do that. So... Are there any questions? If you have questions online, please do contact me. Reach, reach out. Um, we can email you a copy of the budget if you wanted to see the nitty-gritty details um, or if you have any other questions. Yeah, Laura. Um, <clears throat> you could. Um, in general, we haven't done that. But uh, in general, Laura, just to kind of be frank, Things have been so tight. We hadn't spent any money on anything. Um, is that fair, Penny? I mean, yeah. And so, I, I, yeah, so right now I think there's two funds, Jan. There's the food pantry fund and then the general fund, right? We can make as many as we want, Jan, I suppose, though, right? Whatever the church wants to do, but uh, I guess we'll have to be more creative maybe. And think, but yeah, Laura, your question's a good one. She just asked uh, if there's a way to give directly to the, to the Pew Fix Fund. So right now we just have money in the bank, and we're gonna probably do that this year. But I guess the next thing would be the carpet, although it's holding up okay. So any other questions? That was a good one. Hearing none. Thank you to Tom and who joined us via Zoom and uh, for everyone else. Um, just a word, Dan does a great job with, he, he was a little out of sorts because he wasn't at, at that early meeting. Um, they do such a good job taking care of this church. Pete has replaced almost everything here. So I know that we're not supposed to touch each other, but when it's done, give him a hug because um, Pete, Ed, and Dan, I mean, cutting the grass, trimming all the shrubs, cutting down trees. They've just done an enormous amount of work. And uh, so it's a little awesome. And this rope is just one little piece that Pete did in like a half hour or so. This has been amazing. But, so thank you all. Um, and if there are no other questions, may God give you all a blessed week.